Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in, however you may be doing so, either with us live, live streaming over on KTSMRadio.com, of course, the over-the-air signal, and, of course, on the various social media pages that we're up on these days with full video, and, of course, the graphics that come along with it here, including Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. And, of course, today is Saturday, August 27th, and today we are talking about the history and upcoming installation recognizing Benito Juarez, specifically as part of the 12 Travelers series of monuments, and again, the many reasons it's going to be placed here, some of the companion monuments, and a whole lot more with that. Again, find us live on air, online, streaming on KTSMRadio.com, and with full video on the El Paso History Radio Facebook page and YouTube channel, along with also our great partners in history on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, and this is, of course, the place where we say Texas history begins in El Paso. So we do have a history moment today at the top of Hour 2 from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk. Today talking about the Chamizal National Monument and, of course, its bit of history on its own. And also a little bit of why this statue is going to be placed here that we're talking about here today. So our guest here in studio today, we are joined by uh, Ken Ramirez, a president of the 12 Travelers, and Adair Margo, advisor to the 12 Travelers Project, particularly in this context, and founder of the Tom Lee Institute. Thank you all very much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having us this morning, Andrew. Great to be here, Andrew. Absolutely happy to have you all on because the 12 Travelers has been, well, I've been long familiar with it, kind of grew up with the project in a lot of considerations, as other people have, but there's always someone out there. I mean, anytime I talk about any serious aspect of our history here, always finding someone that says, really, I had no idea, and that's why I love to get the opportunity to talk about things like this because there's always someone out there that this is their moment to find out about something that has been a major, both current recognition of history and literally an altering of our landscape around here because people may think that um, the certain statues are, well, that's a big and impressive statue, but not necessarily realize that it's part of also a larger effort going on with that here. So we're going to be talking about this in a couple different ways, uh, both, of course, what the 12 Travelers of the Southwest and all of that concept is and the organization, as well as what this current effort is. So whenever you, you start kind of talking about even just this concept, the 12 Travelers, it's an inter- interesting way to kind of couch part of our history here, isn't it? Well, uh, listen. It always amazes me when they ask me about what are the 12 travelers. And when I tell them about we celebrate, you know, people in, uh, that walk through the, uh, the area, you know, to celebrate. And I tell them, have you been to the airport? Have you seen, mm-hmm. you know, the uh, monument there? And it amazes me that people don't even see it. They drive by it. But they don't recognize the monument at the airport. And it's the largest equestrian statue in the world. And they don't see it. They drive by it. And they don't recognize the importance, you know, of having monuments throughout El Paso. And that's why we are. We celebrate the people that, uh, you know, that walk through this community. And uh, we've been doing it. And uh, that is our purpose of the 12 travelers, to celebrate, uh, you know, throughout the 500 years mm-hmm. in the, you know, the history of El Paso. And uh, it's not only the question, but we started to Fray Garcia de San Francisco right. across from the plaza. And uh, again, you know, people walk by it. Do they really see it? Do they celebrate our history? And we're talking about the history of El Paso. Mm-hmm. Very and, important yeah, subject to so us here, absolutely. The and then we have the McGuffin, mm-hmm. you know, at the Keystone Park. Susan McGuffin is a beautiful monument also. And uh, you, we need to celebrate our history. So that's what we do. And now we're celebrating the monument of Benito Juarez at the Shamisa. Mm-hmm. With a lot of events, again, coming up in and around the actual installation of the monument itself here. And this has been a long time coming here. Uh, there, uh, people may be very familiar with your work with the Tom Lee Institute. How did you come to be involved with this particular project? Well, you know, the 12 Travelers, Tom Lee wrote a book in 1947. Mm-hmm. And even before that, he wanted to do a calendar of 12 Travelers through the Pass of the North. 
people who left their imprints on this region. Mm-hmm. And so when, you know, Nick Hauser, we're, we've been very fortunate. I mean, it, this extends all the way back to Tom Lee and his concept. But Nick Hauser was here doing research on the Tiguas. Mm-hmm. And then his brother, John Hauser, uh, came to El Paso and he familiarized himself with Tom Lee's book, which are illustrations of mm-hmm. these figures. And Tom said he chose him really because they were picturesque. It wasn't any real magic to those exact 12, except he wanted 12 for a calendar. They're 12 months. But John Hauser came to town, both a painter as well as a sculptor, and he wanted to breathe life into those two-dimensional pictures on a book and add not specifically those, but some of them are the same ones, like uh uh, Fry Garcia de San Francisco, the build, mm-hmm. the builder who built the mission in Juarez, 1659 it was founded, the same one John chose as his first monument. Right. And then uh, the equestrian, the coming of the horse with Oñate, was mm-hmm. also a Tom Lee. But it extends back there. And, but D- John said when he came, he said, you know, Tom Lee, he was so grateful to him for at least having a trowel full of El Paso history, but there was so much more. And so Tom heartily enjoyed, endorsed this project. Of course, I did Tom's oral history. Of course. I founded the Tom Lee Institute, so it was a natural connection uh, mm-hmm. to the, the the 12 travelers for me to, uh, to be involved. I also did Jose Cisneros' uh, uh, oral history, and mm-hmm. John researched actually a lot of what he did as far as the accoutrements of horsemanship and what they may have worn. And mm-hmm. he did that through Jose and, and Tom. So it's been a privilege for uh, me to be a, a part of this. I've learned a lot. And it's uh, with Benito Juarez. He wasn't one of the original 12 travelers, but he's someone that Tom Lee made an exception in doing a portrait of him because he admired him as a constitutional president of Mexico. And so back in 1947, he actually mm-hmm. did a portrait of him for the uh, Pan American Roundtable. We have members of the Pan American Roundtable descending on El Paso for this event. All right. Because mm-hmm. they commissioned Tom Lee to do a portrait of Benito Juarez after Harry Truman uh, went to Mexico City, the first president to ever go to Mexico City and lay a, a wreath on the tomb of the Nino, Ninos Héroes. It was a huge event, but El Pasoans commissioned a portrait of Benito Juarez mm-hmm. back then. So to me, it's very, it's, it, you kind of know you're in the stream of something that's so much bigger than any one project. It is, as Kenneth said, El Paso history. And it's a marvelous place to be. And Tom tapped into it in a profound way. And John and all the Housers, who we've been so fortunate, they have tapped into it in a, in a, ex- Extremely, I mean, to the extent that they travel down to his hometown in Oaxaca, and John, right. when he's sitting there, a little boy comes up when he's sitting there, and he has a scar on his face from a dog bite, which Benito Juarez had a scar on his face from a dog bite. So they are the type of people who go find the people. You know, they they they're in this stream of something very very profound in realizing these monuments. Yeah, we're going to be talking more again with uh, Nick Hauser again a little bit later in the program here as well. And I'm not going to say that uh, the Hauser family has come to be defined by this project, but they are inextricably linked to it in any circumstance here because of how much uh, their personal history has intertwined here, that their, in some circumstances, life's work has really been come to be a huge part of the execution of this project here. So, again, the 12 Travelers and the monument that we are talking about that is going to be getting installed here coming up uh, a little bit later next month about a month away here give or take yes. let's just call it september 25th with the benito Juarez monument and we got a picture of here of uh, one of the i think uh, technically uh, computer drawings of it but uh, one of the actual then demonstrations of the size of it this is one of the uh, mock-ups uh, of the actual clay sculpting of it here that will then be of course cast into it and so this is going to be a well i mean a, an approachable but sizable monument itself right yes it's a uh, uh Life and a half. So, literally larger than life, so to speak, yes. here. One and a half one times. And a half 
yes. what you can expect yes. to see from a normal yes. person here. Yes. So, yes, it will be a, uh, again, Benito Juarez uh, is a fascinating figure on his own, but the way you're distro- to demonstrating him here is his own fascinating way as both the, the child and then as the uh, adult figure that people may be very familiar with, particularly given the namesake of our sister city just across the border here as kind of a lifetime love of Lord. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it here, and so we'll be talking about the monument as well, but it was both approachable, but will also be, again, literally larger than life. Yes, you know, and if you look at the uh, mock-up, the boy uh, has, Benito Juarez didn't know how to read or write. You know, he walked barefooted, uh, you know, to a place where the Franciscan started teaching him how to read and write. And you see him sitting at the bench with a book. He's not reading the book. He is just, it's just an image to show the people his desire to be able to read and write, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a space between the child and uh, Benito and Benito as a president. And people can sit between the two. So people can actually interact with the uh, the, uh, monument. And it's, again, a small size picture of it here. This is one of the mock-ups, essentially, maquettes yeah. that was done yeah. in order to both uh, promote and, again, give an idea of the actual then construction of it. And then this will be, again, much, much, much larger than this. What will be end up being installed there at the uh, Chamizal National Monument, again, coming up a little bit later next month here. And there's going to be, again, a lot going on in and around the actual installation itself, right? Yes, definitely. I actually have... We have, yeah. Look, this is the way it's gonna be. Excellent. There's so good example of here. Hold it yes. up. Uh, hold it up a little bit closer here, so people can take a look at it. And that'll be uh, again uh, what it'll actually be, and the way it'll be installed there. Uh, what is the actual material that's gonna be made out of there? Uh, bronze. Bronze. It'll it's be bronze. made out of bronze it's there. It's gonna have a patina. Okay. Excellent. There. Uh, yes. Child to man. The name of the statue Child there. Child to man. Yes. And like I said, you know, it's a purpose, the book, the child, but it's an inspiration for people to understand that Benito as a child wanted to learn to read and write. And he walked barefooted, you know, to the uh, Franciscan monastery so they can teach him. And he became a lawyer. He became the governor of Oaxaca. Mm -hmm. And then he became the best president Mexico has ever had. There's a lot to unpack with that last part of it here, but definitely recognizing the history <laughs> yes. and that he's been a but product definitely yeah, important. He was constitutional. One of the best. <laughs> Let me rephrase. Fair one enough. of the best. <laughs> and you mentioned the events. We have planned a, a, a destination weekend. Mm. Uh, I was invited to go to a Pan American conference. I had mm. mentioned Pan American Roundtable commissioning a painting by Tom Lee that's now in the State Department uh, in the diplomatic reception rooms. But we have invited people. They'll be coming from out of town, and we'll be staying downtown and having a rooftop tour uh, at the Paso del Norte Hotel on uh, the Friday night before, yeah. and then and then uh, Saturday have a, a walking uh, tour of uh, the Segundo Barrio murals. So we'll have Excellent. activities over the weekend before the Sunday dedication. And we have very special guests coming for that. Absolutely. So a lot going on with that. Again, again, that's Adair Margo, uh, founder of the Tom Lee Institute and advisor to this project with the 12 Travelers. Also, of course, there, uh, Ken Ramirez, president of the 12 Travelers. Again, if you want to find out anything about both uh, this project and the events we got coming up here, again, uh, 12travelers.org, which spelled X-I-I travelers dot org is the way people can find it there there's That's also correct. there's also some information over on say visit el paso and other websites here so uh, search up you know benito what a statue 12 travelers and you're probably going to find more or less the same thing because along with the destination part of it here there's a lot of uh, travel information a uh, hotel lodging those kind of things here so again a lot of information coming out about this we got to take that next break right now but again all focused on the unveiling of that benito what is child to man statue that we have been showing coming up september 25th so next month here so taking that first break of our hour right now again well you're listening to the opaso history radio show back after this break with more here on news radio 690 ktsm you are listening to the opaso history radio show streaming on facebook where you can find archive radio programs the opaso history radio show also streams on the facebook page remember in el paso when run by chief administrator barbara given known as bgb 
Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to TV. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing on News Radio 690 KTSM in this pre-recorded episode. We are, of course, the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook. You can go there for our weekly promo announcements and topics about what we got coming up for you. And, of course, you can go to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, where you can find both a the streaming program here and the entire series of El Paso Gold DVDs from Capstone Productions covering more than the last 20 years of history production in town for your viewing pleasure uploaded completely fully and for free plus the 20 more recent segments from our abc7 tv series from el paso history tv reminder to support some of our advertisers as well pepe's restaurant in canyon Tio, open for in-house dining 6761 donovan drive call pepe's at 915-877-2152 915-877-2152 we'll be headed there uh, conditions permitting after the show here today i'm sure it'll be fine to go out there i'll be headed there and i often get the crew special because they have a great set of well, New Mexican food is one way to put it, but also the preservation of the Griggs recipes and all that. So go and check them out. Of course, home of the Juan and only Margarita. Then again, 6761 Donovan Drive here. But again, joining us here in studio, still joined here by Adair Margo, founder of the Tom Lee Institute, and Ken Ramirez, president of the 12 Travelers Association. Thank you all very much for joining us here in studio today. Thank you again. Thank you. Glad to be here. Absolutely glad to have you all on here because we were talking about the 12 Travelers, what it means, what it is a part of here, and of course the upcoming uh, monument installation coming here for Benito Juarez, child to man, again, the small size shown here with, uh, that is uh, Ethan Hauser behind it there, right? 
Yes, that's Ethan with the maquette of the uh, monument. And again, that is very small, and again, showing the further idea of how big, and I, I believe that, is that him back there too, or, or someone else working yeah. on it? It's a little bit hard to tell. Yeah. Okay, that that is him there in that case, yeah. showing how much bigger it will actually be, and again, the full installation of the monument that's going to be happening at the uh, Chamisal uh, National Monument coming up again later next month, September 25th, and a lot of events going on around it here, all part again of the uh, 12 Travelers concept here so again the 12 travelers talking about both coming from uh, tom lee's work both as a you know convenience for a way to show a calendar but also the way it shows the span and many different changes of history we've talked previously with other organizations similarly if very different tangents they're taking on it showing the span of el paso history such as say um, you know viva el paso has done a good idea of democratizing and bringing a lot of base level information to the community about how many things have changed and been different in town here so these monuments the series both the concept of them and then what is in production is another way to achieve that show that there has been many different individuals many different spans ways and methods history has been both defined and changed in our region Yes, you know, uh, Adair touched a little bit about Tom Lee, and mm. we had so many things to be proud of in El Paso, and uh, that's what we're trying to promote, for people in El Paso to be proud of their community, to recognize all the things, you know, that we can achieve if we just pull together, and if we can recognize our history, our legacy, and continue to see all the things that we can be proud of. And uh, that is the 12 Travelers. We have mm -hmm. a very enthusiastic board. We're a small nonprofit, and look at what we have achieved. We have achieved incredible things. Mm -hmm. We have raised so much money, and uh, just uh, doing it as a nonprofit, as a small board, and uh, we've done it, you know, by grants, by, uh, you know, from $20 you know, contributions to, uh, you know, $25,000 to grants. And, uh, and like I said, it's a small board. And we are able to achieve great things. And that's what El Paso is. You know, we pull together our resources and we can achieve anything we want. And that's what we want El Paso's to be proud of. You know, things that we can achieve if we all work together if we are proud of our city, and this is what we represent. That's where what El, uh, the 12 Travelers are. And just make sure you get a little bit closer to that microphone there, make sure everyone can hear you, because we're talking about both, again, this upcoming monument, which, again, we have the uh, example of here for those looking over on our social media, including, of course, uh, some of the parts of already being, uh, you know, the previous production of it going on, the efforts of it, because it is cast in bronze, and so will be significant in its own way here. And uh, I guess we have a picture of uh, some of the construction of one of the previous monuments you've, we have been talking about there, that one of uh, Frey Garcia showing the size of it there, because... Where it's installed there in downtown El Paso, that particular monument, the one of Frey Garcia, is, it's, I mean, it's dwarfed by the buildings around it here, even if it is on its own, a very large monument. Again, larger than life size. That one, I want to say, is a little bit, that one's more than one and a half times life size, right? Yes, yes. Out there can uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I don't know exactly how many times, but it is larger. Yeah, I mean, yes. just looking at it there, we're showing that the, well, let's just call it the torso of uh, Frey Garcia. That was clearly right. in the production here because he is headless. That is not how it is installed. There. <laughs> just that's the point in production there. But, I actually uh, have a, one of the heads. Uh, John would <laughs> cast. House. Yeah, in fact, when I, I bought it from 12 Travelers, I, I put it in our living room. <laughs> I thought it would fit, and it did not fit. We had to move it out. Yeah, oh, well, but you still so got it in fit, case. Yeah. That's good to have. <laughs> so just to put a perspective here, particularly for our radio audience, we're looking at roughly the, the torso of Frey Garcia here being about as tall as John Hauser was himself here. So just to give kind of the idea of the scale there. I mean, it, it's sizable, but so that's just one of the monuments, and there are a, the other ones that we've mentioned here, such as uh, uh, Magothan, the Equestrian, and now with Benito Waters, there's even another one that is already uh, in the works and coming up next, right? Yes, it is the fifth monument in the 12 Traveler series will represent the Tiwa tribe. We're very proud. And it's going to be placed near the Mission Arisleta del Sur Pueblo. And it's going to represent the Governor Francisco Tilagua and the War Captain Barto Pique. 
following the forced migration from New Mexico to El Paso del Norte during the 1680 revolt. And it's been already approved. Excellent. And again, another very significant part of our history. Again, uh, that's Ken Ramirez, president of the 12 Travelers, and Adair Margo, also joining us here in studio, advisor to the project and founder of the Tom Lee Institute. Got to take that next break right now. So come out of this next break, get a little bit more into this monument, the concept of it, and of course, all the events coming around it with Benito Juarez, the Child to Man Monument, coming up a little bit later next month. So stay tuned for more here on the El Paso History Radio Show, here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140. For souvenirs, gifts, and decor, Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549, 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in what is Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholics. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. Of course, you can find out a lot more about some of the many events going on in around town, and I have it on good authority that some of the things we're talking about today will be up over on the celebrationsofourmountains.org website. They have a lot of interesting things pointed out there, both in, around, both out in the physical and natural environment of our community, including uh, one coming up a little bit later in September, I do understand. 
and uh, some of the dinosaur tracks out there at Mount Cristo Ray, tours of that here. But, of course, they're listing a lot of events going on around. So if you want either want to get out and about or see some interesting sites, they're a very good group to check that out with. So, again, celebrationsofourmountains.org or just search Celebration of Our Mountains on your favorite search engine, and you can probably find it. So it's mountains and much more. And, of course, our friends at Monterey Asset Management have changed their name. If you've been hearing about that, that's not what they're going by anymore because they are now M1EP Management Corporation to better show that they are there for you to have up property management and investing in multifamily housing. So their website, M1EP.com. That's M numeral one EP.com. You can find them there or find them by giving them a call at 915-592-4549. That's 915-592-4549. But again, joining us here in studio, we do, of course, have uh, Ken Ramirez, the president of the 12 Travelers and Adair Margo, advisor to the projects and founder of the Tom Lee Institute, talking all about what is coming up with that installation of the new monument representing and uh, recognizing uh, Benito Juarez as a very, very important figure both to this region and uh, worthy of being memorialized in this way again. And that interesting kind of concept in the way history is being explored when it comes to the 12 travelers here. And so we've been talking a little bit about uh, both some of the construction, some of the aspects of it. But again, the installation weekend, I guess is a, a decent way to put it here, will be a significant one. And there is a lot planned around it, right? Yes, you are correct. And we're going to get into uh, what's going to happen on the 25th. There is going to give you some information on it. Absolutely. Uh, we do have, we have special, we we're very excited. Both of our consul generals have been very involved mm-hmm. in the planning for this. Uh, Eric Cohen, uh, our, our U.S. consul general in Ciudad Juarez, and Mauricio Ibarra, who's our Mexican consul general here in El Paso. And then Kate Hammond, who's the acting regional director um, of the National Parks Service. We recently lost our director of the Chamizal, Gus mm. Sanchez, mm-hmm. which we were so saddened. This was a project he really supported strongly. Right. But we do have um, uh, Aaron Marr, who's our acting mm-hmm. director, and then we have someone coming from the regional uh, National Park Service, Kate Hammond. So we're excited to have those special guests. There w- will be a, it's something we want to explore as we unveil this monument is the significance of the Chamizal Treaty yeah. and the exchange of land between two sovereign nations in the midst of the Cold War through diplomacy, peacefully. And so there's a model there for the world. And uh, after the unveiling, we will have a panel discussion with our consul generals, with Veronica Escobar, our congresswoman, and with their special guest, uh, Roberto uh, Velasco, Ken Salazar, and Kate Hammond, uh, to just answer that one question and have audience participation so we can learn more about that Chamizal Treaty. Absolutely, because, again, if you're going through our environment out here, maybe it's easy to think, oh, that's an interesting park over there, it looks nice, and it's right near the bridge, and it's it might, if people haven't looked further into it and may not realize that that is one of the more significant, if not regional events, global events, because, yeah, usually border disputes is then followed by, in in historical context, and the war that followed to settle that dispute here. So the fact that this was not solved in anger, but in diplomacy, is a significant world event in its own right. It is. Yes. It, it is, most definitely. And to live in a place where part of your country is now part of the other country, and mm. You know, it's 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 very very significant. But I, we of course have family that live on both sides of our border, uh, and so there's always been an affection uh, for one another. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, they are us; <laughs> we are them. And physically, that actually happened uh, with Cordova Island. So uh, we're excited to yeah. explore that. And I think people uh, that come to the unveiling are going to be very interested in hearing these uh, speakers because they're going to be speaking, uh, you know, very interesting topics. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ken Salazar is going to be speaking about the ties that bind the two countries. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so uh, people will ask me, why are you having Benito Juarez at the Chavisal? Why not having it downtown? We need to have more monuments downtown. You know, so I had to uh, tell them about the importance of the Chavisal. You know, we were talking about uh, what is, you know, Shamisal. It's just a park. No, it's mm-hmm. not just a park. They need to understand, you know, the significance of the Shamisal. 
And, you know, one thing we want to emphasize, this is going to be the first time that the Chamisal is open before pandemic, you know, was closed. Ah, uh, of course. You know? Mm-hmm. So we want people to come to the Chamisal. You know, it's going to be open. And people can come and see the park. It is just a beautiful park, you know, notwithstanding of the just the monument. They oh, have sure. kept the grounds. They're beautiful. So we want people to come and join us, you know, at 1 o'clock on the 25th, see this wonderful, you know, people that are going to be speaking, you know, uh, topics that are so interesting for the community. And join us on unveiling this wonderful monument that belongs to El Paso. Absolutely. Another thing, you know, the fact that Chamizal, it's binational. I mean, Mm -hmm. we have the park at Chamizal just right on the other side. So when there's music on the other side, you can hear it on our side. And we want, you know, this is emblematic of the unity of our country. And one thing I learned through this project is when Benito Juarez actually lived at Paso del Norte, which mm. was renamed for him after right. he visited, but were, was after the flood when the the course of the river began changing and villagers came and spoke to him about their their ranch was now on the the other side of the river and North Americanos were claiming it. So the, that dispute began back then in 1865 uh, when he was living at Paso del mm-hmm. Norte, another very significant uh, fact, and the fact that he and Abraham Lincoln, there will be a medallion uh, commemorating both those presidents, that they mm-hmm. admired. You know, Lincoln has always been beloved uh, in Mexico because he was non-punitive. I mean, he was a friend of Mexico uh, during the Mexican-American War. I mean, he yeah. spoke up uh, for uh, Mexico, and they had, they admired each other, and plus their lives reflected one another uh, in that they both rose from poverty and through education mm. they were able to achieve gre- greatness. And even visually, to think about Abraham Lincoln at six foot four inches and Benito Juarez at four foot six inches, a purebred Zapotec Indian, is a pretty strong visualization of, of our two presidents who admired each one another and respected each other. Absolutely here, and as uh, just kind of a finer point to make here, of course there is the uh, statue also of Abraham Lincoln kind of on the Mexican side of this that, exactly. uh, again, the monument that we're going to be installed here will be mirroring here, but tell you what, we got to take that next break right now, so coming out of this break, we are going to go ahead and uh, talk more about this, so stay tuned here for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. 
Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archive pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM, talking about many different aspects of the uh, 12 travelers and the monuments that are both up and coming here, of course, with those installations happening a little bit later next month. As a remind you of at least uh, one of our other great partners in history here, Rick Kern's music podcast, Talk and Rock Radio, often featuring many aspects of El Paso's musical history and let's just call it just before modern era production here i guess it technically counts as the modern era but uh, it's a nostalgic for a lot of people out there and he has a lot of great remembrances and things he's been involved in himself i got the opportunity to be involved with him with the border legends tour here so if any of those things mean any to you make sure to check him out at talk and rock radio.com and of course patrick total coldwell banker heritage real estate a big sponsor of the show you can give him a call at 915-588-1850 915-588-1850 has done some excellent work for our family and well both the houses that we are either or or going to be inhabiting here shortly so he's an excellent realtor to go to for El Paso homes for sale or rent again call him up rings right in his pocket 915-588-1850 but again joining us here in studio we are joined by uh, Adair Margo founder of the Tom Lee Institute and advisor to the project with the 12 Travelers and of course uh, Ken Ramirez the president of the 12 Travelers so we're talking a lot about all the events that are going to be coming up in and around the again installation of the Benito Juarez Child to Man monument that is coming Coming there for the Chami saw that happening, the unveiling on the uh, and uh, installation September 25th, 2022 here. So coming up, and just one thing I want to highlight before we end this hour of the program here is that you, you kind of mentioned it there about being a, th- this is my phrasing more than your scrappy little nonprofit doing some very <laughs> serious things here in our area, but... I mean, literally, I don't think anyone out there would be dispossessed of the idea that, oh, a statue was a simple thing, particularly of the size there. And we do technically kind of, it's a little bit obscured by the door there. We do have uh, just kind of above your head, if we look a little bit closer, the uh, the foot of the equestrian there. People are wondering about what we're talking about there. You know, it, it is just amazing. We did mention a little bit about the nonprofit, mm. and, you know, the question was over a million dollars. Wow, you know? yeah. So it, it is a lot of money to be raised by a nonprofit. And uh, the small board, uh, I have to give credit to one of our members who's been there since the beginning. And you probably are going to have her at the September, uh, you know, radio show, and mm. that is Jody Schwartz. Mm. My God, her tenacity, her love for the project, it's just been amazing. And uh, she is, uh, you know, my right-hand person, and I rely on her for advice, for her courage, you know, to keep on going when mm-hmm. things, you know, don't come through. She's just been, and her whole family, you know, supports her. 
So it's the whole Schwartz family have been amazing for this project. So it, it has just been my privilege, and I am humble to be part of this project, Andrew. It's, uh, you know, all the uh, monuments that we have have a little bit uh, and a lot of the Schwartz family on them. So I, at this time, I really would like to give a shout out to the Shores family. Because, Absolutely. Yeah. Jody's mother was there at the very beginning with <laughs> Fry Garcia and, you know. Well, also to Adair's mom, you know, her uh, 25000 she gave us as a seed money for Benito Juarez is what gave us the start. For oh, this excellent. So, so these are multi, this is multi generation. <laughs> In a variety of ways here, again, we'll be talking more about the next hour about uh, the Hauser family, their contribution here, talking with one of the Hausers as part of this here. But again, with the events coming up September 25th, for anyone wondering, okay, can I attend these? What can I do? What do you want people to know about, again, this and that, this unveiling, and what this is going to mean for the significance for the region? I want people of El Paso to come and join us on the 25th at 1 o'clock. I want them to feel a part of this, a part of the project a part of the Chamisau. And uh, so that's our main goal right now. The project is done. This is uh, the uh, monument is going to be there. And I want them to join us. And like I said, you know, the next one is going to be at Isleta. Mm -hmm. uh, all these monuments are throughout the city of El Paso. And uh, so I want them to feel they're a part of all of this. So uh, that is my main purpose right now. For people to come and join us at one o'clock at the Chapman South for the unveiling and feel a part of this project. Again, on September 25th, not this Saturday, but a coming <laughs> weekend from yes. here, just in case yes. there's any confusion. So September on. 25th, yes, Absolutely at one o'clock at the Chapman South. We're going to have entertainment also mm -hmm. after the panel. And, uh, you know, uh, we're going to have entertainment both from Juarez and from El Paso. So and uh, Bowie High School, and which, Bowie is High on, School. which is on the property, right uh, there, right, right adjacent, right yes. there. Mm -hmm. They were so excited about being involved, having their students and their alumni, yes, involved. Yes. Absolutely. So a multifaceted celebration, and again, unveiling happening there. Again, we've been talking right now with uh, Ken Ramirez, president of the Twelve Travelers Association, and Adair Margo, advisor to the project and founder of the Tom Lee Institute. We're we'll sticking around with Adair, and we'll be talking with Nick Hauser starting the next hour here of the program. So again, thank you all very much. Stay around with us and stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show in the next hour of the program here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 
1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. 
The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. A uh, lot of stuff we're talking about here today involving the 12 travelers of the Southwest, the concepts, the monuments, and of course the installation that is coming up here. We're going to be joined again here in studio by Adair Margo, founder of the Tom Lee Institute and advisor to the project, as well as a uh, Nick Hauser historian for the 12 travelers. But first, as we do at the start of Hour 2, going to be starting off with a history moment produced by documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk talking this week about the history of the Chamisal area and of course the national monument that has come out of it itself. 
In the 1860s, a major dispute was simmering between Mexico and the United States. The growing international crisis was as tough and thorny as its namesake, the native Chamiso bush. The dispute can be traced back to 1848, when a treaty established the main channel of the Rio Grande as the official boundary between the U.S. and Mexico. But over time, the natural flow of the river moved south, and hundreds of acres of land that had been in Mexico were now in the United States. The exact location of the border became unclear, and international land disputes went on for more than a century. The Chamizal dispute was finally settled by a treaty in 1964. That's when U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson and the President of Mexico, Adolfo Lopez Mateos, met and commemorated the Chamizal Treaty in El Paso. The treaty relocated the channel of the Rio Grande, thereby transferring 437 acres to Mexico, while 193 acres became part of the United States. That land was Cordova Island, formerly an enclave of Mexican territory on the north side of the river channel. Both Mexico and the United States created national parks on the land. In El Paso, the Chamizal National Memorial commemorates the remarkable treaty that finally settled a decades-long border dispute through peaceful diplomacy. The Chamizal National Memorial includes a 540-seat theater and a museum with exhibits that tell the story of Cordova Island and the Chamizal Treaty. Nearby is the Los Paisanos Art Gallery. I'm Jackson Polk with this History Moment for the El Paso History Radio Show. Also at this point in the program, do I have to mention uh, some of our other great partners in El Paso history work. Barbara Given Bainey, who's the operator of the great Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When. You can go there for archive pictures galore. They have 33,000 members plus. It's always changing, growing, and they're keeping it in check because having that many people gathered in even an online space is no mean feat, and to keep it on task is even a more difficult one. So please remember these administrators have worked hard in researching with photos with our history attached, so when others use their photos, they ask credit be given to their site. And of course, Chief Admin Owner and Historian Barbara Given Bainey, affectionately known as BGB. Also, Admins Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret D. Smith, and moderators Ben Vincent and Al Lowe. They do a lot of great work, and again, keep Keeping things on task and on our history here, so please go check them out where we are also streaming just about every Saturday as we usually are, as long as the uh, the tubes and the Facebooks and the Googles are cooperating here. But again, joining us here in studio, we do have Adair Margo, advisor to the 12 Travelers Project and founder of the Tom Lee Institute, and Nick Hauser, historian for the 12 Travelers Project. Thank you very much, both for either sticking around or joining us here today. Good to be here. Thank you. Happy to have you all on here because, again, the reason we have these monuments and the uh, many aspects of them and are talking about them is because of that historical significance. These were not just a, not a popularity contest, so to speak, about why these particular individuals or things were chosen. They may have been very popular in their own right, but their significance to this region is the reason that this whole both kind of concept of history, as you were mentioning in the first hour, Adair, and something that you, Nick, have done quite a lot of research into again not saying that uh, you and your family are defined by this project but you are inextricably linked with it because of the many different aspects that uh, for your own personal contribution you have been very very involved in the research of right correct yeah I've quite a lot of history so i mean your your own personal history involved with this of coming to the area and studying things such as uh well the subject of that next monument we were talking about of the uh, the tiguas and their uh, trials and tribulations and even coming to our area so when it comes to this monument the one that we are talking about of course the one that is going to be getting installed here on uh, september 25th in the uh, chamisal national monument and uh, the benito juarez uh, child to man as we are seeing up on screen there there's a lot of interesting details that i'm sure people are going to want to get to but when you began uh, researching for this one where did you start with what were some of the interesting aspects that uh, drew you and one made you want to look further at it well, um, Benito Juarez is a pretty incredible person, probably Mexico's greatest president. And uh, I, I came here sort of by accident when I was at the University of Arizona. Uh, one, one, one day, uh, um, the professor at the University of Arizona in Tucson mm -hmm. said, anyone would like to do some research with the Indian tribe we know very little about, stay after class, but you better know some Spanish. And mm -hmm. I, I lived near Portland, Oregon. And I thought, well, I'll try, but there'll probably be a whole lot of other students. And he said, stand up if you're interested. I was the only one. And I went to work with the Tiwa Indians on their history, and it was really interesting. And I helped them get recognized as a tribe by the federal government. Which is 
not a common thing here in Texas. In exactly. fact, there's I mean, there have been recent Supreme Court decisions that have been yeah. respected to that and to right. how the recognition happens. Yeah. So very important in its own right there. And I was always interested in Benito Juarez. Uh, I went to Mexico several times when I was small with my parents and really enjoyed it. We had friends in Mexico City. So I really enjoyed it. Um, and then I was so surprised because this is an interesting story. Uh, years ago, decades ago, I... Uh, wanted to go uh, with my wife and my little boy who's now over 40 years old and <laughs> mm-hmm. i wanted to uh, uh see my uh, birthplace rapid city south dakota where my dad worked on mount rushmore mm-hmm. and i hadn't been there since i was you know about a year old or so so on the way we went to wyoming and i thought oh wyoming would be really great the university of wyoming laramie because um a uh, a man uh, by the name of Sergeant uh, Bartlett, uh, he, uh, he, he was at Fort Bliss mm, okay. with the military. And when, uh, when uh, Benito Juarez had to escape and go north to avoid the Maximilian, the, the French army, mm-hmm. uh, he went all the way to uh, El Paso del Norte, which is now Ciudad Juarez. And... Uh, that's pretty fascinating, and uh, there he uh, he he lived uh, in the area for nine months. Pretty incredible. And talk about Indians, not just the Tewas, but others. But the original one of the original tribes was the Monzo Indians, mm-hmm. and uh, they lived in the area where the Shamazal Park is. Up. And uh, years ago, the river changed its course, and. Uh, a lot of the land that had been of the Mongols on the Mexican side became on the U.S. side. And the U.S. government really didn't want to recognize or work with the Monzo Indians, which is kind of interesting. But Benito Juarez, when he came up here, he uh, came in here in, uh, I'm just trying to think, August 1865, escaped. And uh, he, uh, he met some of the Monzo Indians. Of course, um, Benito Juarez was a Zapotec Indian. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, very intelligent, very good person. And, uh, and he wanted to help the Monzos get some of their land back on the U.S. side. Of course, that took 90 years and never really happened, but he, he, he attempted to do it, which is pretty interesting. Absolutely. And so as part of your research into him, among other things, you've uncovered, um, among other things, a uh, photo of him, which yeah. uh, we actually, uh, you have here both in studio with us right now. And yeah. I took a further picture of it here of what uh, you do. I mean, it's very recognizable as of being of Benito Juarez, among other things. Uh, yeah. I was so surprised when I found it by accident at, at Laramie at the, when I was doing research, decided to check on, on Bartlett's history. I, I really wasn't looking for Benito Juarez, but among the uh, uh, information there, the folders and what have you, was this incredible photograph of Benito Juarez. And I knew that uh, when Bartlett was in at Fort Bliss, he met uh, President Juarez and liked him a lot, and they got along real well together. And he purchased that photograph uh, sometime er- in February of 1865. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think uh, uh, Benito Juarez came here in, in August 65. He purchased that photograph because he really liked Benito Juarez. And I, I discovered that photograph by accident. There, there wasn't any information about it. But I found out later by doing research, it was taken by an American photographer by the name of George A. G- a. Gage. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, and Bartlett p- p- purchased that photograph uh, from Gage. And uh, interesting to know that Bartlett, in February 18, 1865, he... Uh, he after he purchased the photograph, he sent uh, uh, this photograph uh, to Benito Juarez to have his signature. He, he did that in 1865. Wow. So then again, those dates we're talking about there, people may recognize them from more the U.S. side of significance, right. perhaps here as being, I mean, directly adjacent to the Civil War. So there's yeah, a lot, exactly. a lot of. Very mm-hmm. important, let's just call them mm-hmm. political things, were going on on either side of the border there. Yeah. So a very interesting point of what you're pointing out, that Benito Juarez was right here in this region. Even before he was president, we worked for the government, in the presidential of the government of the president of Juarez much earlier. Um, guess what he did in about, I think it was 1864 or 1863, I can't remember. Mm-hmm. But he, uh, 
he wanted the Mexican government to recognize and give asylum to uh, slaves from the United States. Mm -hmm. And they did it for a while. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, some of the things in the previous eras of history we're talking about, yeah. including um, such as uh, the Texas Revolution, the Mexican-American right. War, those were either directly contributing or undercurrents within parts of those conflict here. So very interesting that you mentioned and there about his perspective Bartlett on that. had many meetings with uh, the, the, the U.S. government back in 1865 in, in uh, El Paso del Norte, which later became, guess what, Ciudad Juarez. Yep. And uh, at these meetings, uh, uh, a lot was accomplished. Uh, the, the friendship between the United States and, and the Mexican government, especially Fort, with, uh, with Benito Juarez, is very, very close. They became very good friends. And, uh, and, and they, the U.S. government, the, especially Fort Bliss soldiers, mili the, the general, asked Benito Juarez to seek asylum, accept asylum in the United States. Hmm. And the president was happy to hear that. He said, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Uh, the reason I can't, I can't leave my country as long as it's invaded by foreigners, the, the French, you know, Maximilian. Right. And uh, so he refused to do it. He said, I'd rather go up on the mountains in, in, in El Paso del Norte. And uh, if I had to, I would die up there, starvation or because of the cold weather on the mountains. But I can't leave my country. Absolutely here. And so, again, some of those things we're talking about here as well. Again, all folks around uh, what we've got coming up here, that installation of the uh, wa the Benito Juarez Monument coming into the Chamisos. Yeah. We just heard a bit of that history on it there. And uh, it's also, again, worth pointing out that as much as this will be the monument to a you know Mexican president on U.S. soil, mm -hmm. there is a monument to a U.S. president on Mexican soil. Right. They're the companion Lincoln. statue of uh, Abraham Lincoln because they were a uh, colleagues directly they never so to met speak. each other but mm -hmm. uh there was correspondence his wife benita wise his wife actually met lincoln oh okay it's kind of interesting but the other thing is that on this monument you know there's a little benita Juarez, mm -hmm. and he's about 12 years old at the time and he's holding a book when he was little his parents died when he was about two years old both of his parents mm -hmm. and he uh his uh, uncle sort of adopted him and had a, had a farm. And on that farm, he had uh, Benito Juarez not go to school, but work on the farm and herd the sheep. Of course. And then one day when he was herding the sheep, some guys came up uh, on wagons and started talking to the little boy. And guess what they did? While they were talking with him, and he was herding his sheep at the time, his uncle's sheep, mm -hmm. they stole one of the sheep. Oh. And... and the, Uncle got really mad, and Benito decided to leave, and uh, and that's why there's a, there's a sheep right as he's holding a book. When he was little, at that time he didn't have much of an education; he couldn't read, and he of course didn't speak hardly any any Spanish. But he was very fortunate because he es escaped from his uncle and went about forty miles south to the city of Oaxaca, where his one of his sisters worked with with, with a Massa family. A very good family and they sort of had him at the house when they, they saw this little boy come in and helped him and uh, a, a, a priest in the area decided to sort of have Benito move in with him and the priest was a bookbinder he was really into, into books mm -hmm. and he helped Benito Juarez read and read read in Spanish and helped him get an education and he, and he went to school and the priest was hoping that he would become educated and become a priest but it didn't happen he wanted to be a lawyer absolutely so that's why we've got some of the aspects of the statue again and some of the different representations of yeah. it including of course there uh with uh, ethan hauser in the yeah. very small version and then again we can tell in the actual uh, mock-up work being done with it it is not going to be small it's going to be one and a half times right. life size here. So this is what we're going to be seeing. Again, the final version of it. That's the more kind of, a, I guess, computerized version because it's actually cast in bronze. And here we can see uh, some of the molds and some of the progression of that work there. And uh, so, again, that talking there, Nick Howes, our historian for the 12 Travelers, also, of course, joining us here in studio, Adair Margo, advisor to the project and founder of the Tom Lee Institute, talking more about these aspects of history, these monuments, and I guess uh, kind of
kind of both of y'all's personal history involved with these projects and all the research that's gone into them. We've got to take that next break right now. So we'll be back after this break talking more with them and more with y'all here on the El Paso History Radio Show, airing on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Pat. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing on News Radio 690 KTSM in this pre recorded episode. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, I want to tell you what we got coming up for you next on the program. Next week, we are going to be talking with Al Borrego, bringing the Cultural Heritage Society of the Southwest and their next event, a three day, four day, really, event coming up here. When you look at it happening both in Juarez, in El Paso, and in San Lazaro, and of course online. So, a lot of aspects they will be doing, including many aspects of the heritage of the Camino Real, gastronomy of it. I know everyone always picks that out, so we'll be delving into what's coming up with that conference and, of course, the history and current culture that will be on display from that here coming in next week on the program here. One more sponsor to remind you about, of course, Mission Del Rey Southwest. Go there with out-of-town visitors for souvenirs, jewelry, gifts, decor, item, a whole lot of selection. I am always surprised every time I head out to their 12,000-square-foot showroom there. It's amazing how much stuff they cram it literally you move your head around and you will be greeted by something that well as i maybe not have noticed before here one of the particular things they've got recently in some great uh patina patio furniture cast aluminum actually so that it has the <clears throat> same strength size and feel of like cast iron stuff but it won't quite crush your foot if you drop it on there so it's a little bit better that way but they've got a ton of items including uh you know native american products and little flavors of the southwest including when it comes down to uh, food products and such there so for yourself or for anyone you know or any out of towners a great place to take them you can find them online missiondelray.com or visit the new 12,000 square foot showroom there again lee trevino and pelicano mention the el paso history radio show for a discount give them a call to find out all the details 915-440-2140, 915-240-2140, or again, missiondelray.com, because they do ship around the world here. So again, uh, joining us here in studio are joined by Nick Hauser, historian for the 12 Travelers Project, as well as Adair Margo, advisor to the project and founder of the Tom Lee Institute. And the reason, one of the major reasons, I think we're talking about all this history here today is that coming up a little bit uh, under a month away now is going to be that installation and then unveiling of, again, that new Benito Juarez monument that is going to be happening at the Chamizal National Monument. And 
So the reason that that is happening is because uh, this has been part of the, again, extensive history of the 12 Travelers and the projects that have been a part of that. And as part of the celebrations going on there for the event, there's going to be, okay, we talked a little bit about as we're showing that uh, the statue that is going to be installed, again, the digital mock-up of it here anyway on screen. And talking about the books being held, there was a finer point that you made, Nick, about the book that uh, adults Benito Juarez is holding there is a book he actually wrote himself, right? Correct. He wrote this book, and it's called notes to my children and then in spanish that's apuntes para mis hijos you have a copy of that book right yeah, there right i have a copy and uh, unfortunately it's never been translated into english that i'm aware of hmm. mm -hmm. so but, but that book was written in 1855 wow so that's, uh, again, an interesting thing that we're talking about, the soon-to-be literate uh, picture and the image of the younger Benito Juarez, and then the book that he wrote there showing the yeah. quiet movement of it. And uh, there's going to be some readings of that as part of this event coming up on September 25th, right? Good, yes. Mm -hmm. So tell a little more detail. Do you have some more detail about that, Adair? Well, uh, Nick knows this woman, Abdullah yeah. Campbell. Yes, and Abdulia. Uh, Abdulia, who is Zapotec. Mm -hmm. So as part of the, the unveiling... Uh, in fact, just sitting here, I'm thinking uh, something good for her to uh, say in Zapotec. We wanted to hear Benito Juarez's native tongue. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she'll maybe read a paragraph a brief, yeah. or at least quote his, his wonderful quote about respect for others is peace. Excellent here. And, and, and she's really incredible. She speaks really good Zapotec and also Spanish and English. So it would be really nice to have her. At the uh, unveiling of the uh, maquette back in 2013, I believe it was, wow. um, she was there and she gave a talk in Zapotec and made it a, a, a translation of it in English. Excellent here. So again, uh, that's Nick Hauser, historian for the 12 Travelers, also speaking there, Adair Margo, advisor to the project, and again, founder of the Tom Lee Institute. If you want to find out more details about, again, this unveiling and all the projects that we are discussing here, it is xiitravelers.org, again, for 12 Roman numeral travelers.org. Or just search up 12 Travelers and you're probably going to find this. There's not a whole lot of other similar kind of things. 12 Travelers El Paso. Because, again, this unveiling happening September 25th can be found both on that website and the Visit El Paso website. So, again, got to take that next break right now to get to the bottom of the hour. But coming out of this, we will talk more again with our guests here and a whole lot more about the projects and more. So stay tuned for more here on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. 
That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page 
Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM, uh, talking about a lot of the many different interesting aspects of the 12 Travelers of the Southwest Projects here. Getting back to that here in just a second. Of course, I have to tell you about what's coming up this week only in El Paso, Inc., many of the local stories of great impact and uh, significance that they are continuing to develop each and every week. So for El Paso's Business Journal, El Paso, Inc. is available for home or business delivery to receive El Paso. Inc. You can order it online and find the articles themselves with their digital subscription at ElPasoInc.com. You can also see them, particularly in the B section, every week for the promo announcements and what's coming up on our next program. So we appreciate their partnership in helping us continue to talk about and promote El Paso's history as well. But again, joined here in studio by Adair Margo, founder of the Tom Lee Institute and advisor to the 12 Traveler Project, as well as Nick Hauser, historian for the 12 Travelers, talking about, of course, the upcoming installation of the Benito Juarez statue that's going to be happening at the Chamis but of course the history of both the monument itself beyond the history that has gone into it uh the way it has come about is interesting because it's part of a, a long legacy that again nick your your family is pretty well involved with ever since you know original arrival in the area that you've had a lot of significance for for you and and your relations on uh, essentially developing of much of the way that we conceive of history we were talking a lot about particularly in the first hour some of the different monuments that have been around here of course we've got the uh, benito Juarez monument that is uh coming up here uh but with some of the other ones such as probably the one that people might be most familiar with even if they don't necessarily realize that as part of the series again the equestrian statue that very 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 large statue that people see when coming out uh, to the airport i mean that's uh, again a part of the series here and that may be one of the biggest and most recognizable parts of it but again the many other aspects including uh say uh the Fray garcia statue that people can find in downtown el paso or the um uh, susan mcgoffin statue that people can find out at the uh, keystone heritage park and site there i mean all of these have been again long de- defined by your family i'm going to say yes and so the history and the research that's gone into it, I mean, you've been long involved with trying to figure out how to demonstrate because it's one thing to have a statue of a person and or have like, say, you know, a bust or something, a representation of their image. But the, what we're putting into these, I mean, the detail work that goes into each and every one of these statues, I mean, even with the Susan McGuffin one that we're looking at here, some of the things about what she's holding or the dogs around her, the style of the dress, those are, that takes extensive research, right? Correct. So describe what goes into it. How do you go about doing that that kind of research and how it's evolved over the years with these many different, again, this initial part of the series of statues? Well, my interest is uh, looking at the overall history mm-hmm. of the area and not going by race, right. not going by gender, but looking at all the people that made major contributions to the area here. And that includes Native Americans, of course, uh, people from Spain, uh, and of course, uh, uh, now M- Mexican people, Hispanic people, and also some Anglos, and also some African people. Really incredible. And include women, too. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Absolutely. So putting together the series, again, based on the the work by Tom Lee there is kind of foundational to it. But as it continues on, again, um, Nick, your your family has been so involved with it because, again, this is... I mean, I, I would hesitate as a not art critic person myself to call it a, a part of his life's work. But, I mean, seriously, again, some of the statues, again, the equestrian, um, chiefly among them, are, I mean, they're, they're historic in their own right because of their size and the scope of them, and, right? And, you know, that, that monument, John, I mean, as a classicist, I mean, who knew about Leonardo's uh, stallion that was never completed, it was this aspiration mm-hmm. to make something larger than mm-hmm. Leonardo's. Course. It's very significant. And John, as an artist, is unusual, especially in contemporary times. Mm-hmm. A classicist who, in the midst of building the clay for that, was working on the, between the horse's ears, and everybody here locally is saying, hurry up, forget about what's between the <laughs> horse's ears, and no one will know. And his response was, the gods will know. I and mean, that's like the Greeks uh, who... <laughs> When you're looking for economy and getting things done quick, it, he was just a very unusual, this family is a very unusual family, really, uh, for him to have lived the way he did and given so much to his 
craft. Absolutely. Here again, the the size of the statue there, and again the previous ones as well. So I mean, a kind of very similar. He loved taking those pictures right in front of them again with the Fray Garcia statue there, showing the scale and the yeah. size of it here. So I think that one qualifies as probably like twice life size as well. The Fray Garcia one that people can again currently and see in downtown El Paso. You know, we talked about location. That's located right there by South El Paso El Paso mm-hmm. Street that goes all the way to the bridge. You cross the bridge, and then there's the mission. Mm-hmm. So it's on our, our side. And what I love about this project, too, when John did this monument, when the Housers did it, they gave a maquette that stands in front of the Juarez mission, mm-hmm. mission that Fry Garcia with Monso Indian Labor built. So right. it's, it's, it's always unified, our border. Absolutely. Here. So in so we talked a little bit about how you came to be, you know, in this area and involved with it. How did, how did the rest of your family end up being involved with these projects? Well, I have to think about that. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, gosh, what can I say? Uh, my brother uh, came to the Southwest when I was in uh, Tucson, Arizona. He lived for a while in Tucson. And then later he lived in New Mexico and all over the mm. area. And then, then after that, in El Paso. So he'd be very interested in the history, the culture, the people, and, you know, so that had a lot to do with it. Yeah, of course. And again, being, uh, he had some very interesting ideas. I remember at least one concept that came up in, in previous conversations that were had with him of having uh, literally border spanning uh, statues that never quite came to fruition here because of many logistical and political issues involved with here. But he was definitely a big dreamer. Those early traders, what were their names? The early traders. And one, one foot was going to be in the U.S. and one foot was going to be in the, the anyway. Yeah. I remember I bet you, I mean, that, that, that one has yeah. stuck with me ever since I heard about it. Cause it's a, and the idea was that you'd be able to climb up one leg and then yeah. down the other leg. Again, that's where some of the political issues start coming in here in, uh, you know, border issues. And one of the reasons that would have been a very aspirational project to do here. But again, his vision for a lot of these things, he, he was never exactly small scale. Correct. But he grew up as a little boy looking up at, at those faces on Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Right. I mean, his dad, I saw a video in John's studio yeah. of his dad repelling down Abraham Lincoln's <laughs> nose. Wow. And so growing up that way, and it's that aspiration. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget, I mean, this was a lesson to me. I was working with Tom Lee, but everybody begins grousing. Why is it taking so long? Why, you know, how we can get small minded. But I remember saying something in repeating what I had heard, uh, complaining, and I remember Tom Lee saying sharply to me, "Let the man achieve his dream, and to dream so largely. I mean, it elevates all of us to see what's possible to have someone like John Hauser here." And as a more technical note, of course, uh, I mean the statue, the that idea that only, is uh, something. I mean, the, the idea that only uh, you know the gods could see it here. I mean, now modernly, a little bit more modernly, the installation of that. Again, not saying people should do this anywhere near the airport, but a drone could see it now. So the point is that people, I mean, there's ways that people can expect every aspect of this. That's you're right. You're exactly My father right. was very, very much supportive of uh, Mount Rushmore, the Lincoln being included in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, because Lincoln was so incredible in terms of, of the Civil War against slavery and what have you. Mm-hmm. And strange enough, I, I've done a lot of research on my family, mm-hmm. and they were from Illinois also. Oh, okay. And uh, one of my my ancestors' cousins, a woman, and I don't remember what her name is, but she had to take care of a little little boy for the family. And guess who it was? Abraham Lincoln. I was say, if it's Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> a year or two old. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. And then the other thing is when my dad started working on Mount Rushmore, he received from, um, oh gosh, I forgot what where, where the guy was in South Carolina. I'll have to take a look. Uh, but anyway, he collected historic photographs. And he sent my father the copy of a photograph of Abraham Lincoln that they used for Mount Rushmore. Oh, wow. And I have that copy today. And oh, uh, it's wow. pretty incredible because this guy wanted to dedicate, you know, he wanted to include the his, his historic photograph, a copy of it. For the monument. Excellent there. So on the monument that we're talking about here locally, again, with this one of, of Benito Juarez, I mean, uh, we talked a little bit about your, some of your research you've done on it. How did this actual monument itself, and maybe Adair, you can chime in on this well, how did this decision to make this one happen and, of course, the progression of it over, 
I mean, more than a decade now, once the uh, some of the maquettes were being shown off here. How did how did this history come about, and of just the monument itself? Oh, oh, you're talking to me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, well, uh, Benito War is a very important to the history of, of both sides of the river here, mm-hmm. and people recognize that, and uh, and and a lot of people really thought that. You know, Benito Juarez deserves to be be recognized with a, with a monument, they told my brother. Mm-hmm. And, and also, it goes back, you know, after the Chamizal Treaty. Oh, of course. Right. Uh, Mexico uh, uh, erected not only a monument to Abraham Lincoln, mm-hmm. but Avenida Lincoln. You t- they honored our president uh, after the Chamizal Treaty. Mm-hmm. Uh, the United States never reciprocated. And it's very significant, I think, we were, Kenna was talking about small, scrappy, not-for-profits. Uh-huh. But in our country, when there's something the government should do, but it hadn't gone around to it, we have this, this you know, not for, not-for-profit organizations where individuals can start something and raise money and make it happen. And the 12 Travelers made this reciprocal monument to Benito Juarez. How many years later? They erected a... a Lincoln in 1964. Mm, it's been uh-huh. in the it's been in um, the 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 description. I think the plan for the Chamizal National Memorial on our side since 1981, and mm. they talked about it before. But it's only now that through the efforts of a not for profit, a local effort, a local effort that has international uh, ramifications, and it's of international importance. And what we've worked at real hard in trying to working with our consuls to get the attention it needs, not just for the sake of attention, but because this, the history mm-hmm. of the United States is incomplete without considering what has happened here at the Pass of the North. And it, it enriches everybody's experience of history and enriches everyone's experience of what living on a U.S.-Mexico border means and what occurred here. Absolutely here. Again, that's Adair Margo, advisor to the 12 Travelers Project and founder of the Tom Lee Institute, along with Nick Hauser, historian for the 12 Travelers. Got to take that next break right now. Coming back, we'll, uh, of course, uh, have some final thoughts on the monument, all the aspects of it, and tell you, of course, what's coming up there for it. Remind you of some of those important dates. So stay tuned for more here on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. 
Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks. Thank you all so very much for having joined us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I've been your host, Andrew J. Polk. Again, joining us here in studio this hour have been Adair Margo, advisor to the 12 Travelers Project and founder of the Tom Lee Institute, and Nick Hauser, historian for the 12 Travelers, as well as, again, in the previous hour where we did have uh, Anna Ramirez, the president of the 12 Travelers here. So with a... A lot of the aspects of history that we are talking about here, uh, the actual date for this unveiling that is coming up with the 12 Travelers, again, people can find out information about it at uh, 12travelers.org, that's X-I-I, so Roman numeral 12, travelers.org. That unveiling of September 25th of this year is meant to, well, be, be a good time for events around this part of the region, but also a significance for it uh, that you were pointing out there, Adair, right? Yeah, we actually chose the date uh, to coincide with when President Lyndon Johnson and President Lopez Mateos met at the center of the Stanton Street Bridge uh, and embraced uh, uh, to affirm the Chamizal Treaty that had uh, uh, occurred uh, the year before in in uh, sixty three. Absolutely, because, again, the establishment of that treaty, the significance of the area that is, again, the statue is going to be in at the Chamizal uh, National Monument is going to be a very, again, the way that history was set out and able to even happen, you can go back to the currents of Benito Juarez and the relationship he had with Abraham Lincoln, among other things, because without that kind of a thing, again, the amount of land and border disputes that have been settled not in anger, number very few, if many at all, within world history. So the fact that it was able to do that way and the fact that the spirit continued on is incredibly important there. In the midst of the Cold War. In the midst, in the midst of the Cold War, too, when land boundaries were incredibly contended in a whole lot of ways there and then nick we're talking about a lot of your research in history and your family's history and on the creation of this series of monuments here and you were mentioning at least another significant date that happens right around this time every year about uh, some of the names of the even just our area right oh yes you're talking about the uh, what happened in in, in el paso del norte mm -hmm. well what happened in el paso del norte um uh, many several years after uh President Juarez left the area, went back to Mexico because the uh, French had been defeated. Right. Uh, the people really in the area of Ciudad, uh, or rather El Paso del Norte, they wanted to honor the, their, their president. And uh, they decided uh, to change the name of their town from El Paso del Norte to Ciudad Juarez. And they did it on September 16th, 1888. So right around that time, DSCC September, of course, a significant date there for uh, Mexican history as well here. So again, a lot of this will be on display. And again, a lot of conversations and uh, presentations happening along with the installment and the unveiling of this new monument and statue there, including, again, uh, some of the people we've been talking about here in both hours of the program as well, right? Right. And Nick, that's when we took our, I mean, after that, we were able to take the name El Paso for the north the right. north side of the river before that it was called franklin franklin yeah. or uh, in fort bliss terms the post opposite yeah. el paso del norte correct and some of those yeah. terminology here so because settlement had been happening on both sides of the river but again given some of those let's just call them political issues or international political issues involving administration and those kind of things a lot of stuff had happened, a lot of history that has passed through this area. And part of that, again, we'll be recognizing with that, again, upcoming monument that we are talking about to be installed there, the unveiling September 25th, 2022, 1 p.m., as was mentioned, at the Chamizal uh, National Memorial and in the History and uh, Museum there. So, again, uh, thank you all very much for stopping by and talking with us about all these aspects and what people can expect from this. Again, when it comes down to the significance of this monument or, or any of the previous ones that either, you know, Adair, you have uh, been advising on or Nick, you have done the history on and the research on to bring them forth. What do you hope people get from them? I think this monument or, or really any of them. I okay. hope they will. I mean, just personally, I have learned more about El Paso history through the 12 Travelers Project than I ever did in any classroom. 
or really even, I mean, just Nick's done a lot of original research. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing about our region, there just hasn't been a lot, or there's just a lot to be un uncovered. Mm -hmm. As John Hauser said, you know, Tom Lee gave us a trowel full through his 12 travelers, but now they're adding, but it's just for generations to come. We have, we need to focus on our region and what's really special about it and not try to become part of a national dialogue on, on making villains of people, but we just have a lot of things that are extraordinary and, and uh, making heroes of people and being realistic about how history unfolded and the difficulties of it. And that's one thing you get through the 12 Travelers Project is that if it hadn't been for the equestrian or Oñate, mm -hmm. the, the Tiguas, our next, our next monument, wouldn't be here. Absolutely. So you start seeing how history impacts, and you can see it here through, through the, through the uh, 12 Travelers Project. My hat's off to the Housers and the 12 Travelers. Uh, I wanted to get on board with this. It's so enriching. Absolutely. And Nick, for your perspective about, again, what you hope people get out of, again, either this upcoming monument or any of the other ones that you have been involved in the research and your family, of course, in the creation of, what do you hope people get from them? Well, I think they should realize how important our history is, but um, it includes many people of different cultures, many of races, gender, and what have you. I think they should understand that. We're on the border here, and Mexico is our, our partner, our, our, our friends across the river. And we should realize that, you know, we share a lot in common. We should work together. Absolutely here. So, again, that's Nick Hauser, historian for the 12 Travelers Project, Adair Margo, advisor to the project and founder of the Tom Lee Institute. Again, with that unveiling of the Benito Juarez Monument that is going to be coming up, Benito Juarez Child to Man, uh, happening on September 25th of this coming month here. Again, XII Travelers for 12travelers.org where people can find that information or again visit El Paso is where people can also find that. So Adair, Nick, and also uh, kind of from the previous hour, thank you all very much for speaking to us about these many aspects of the history and of course the monuments themselves here today. Thank you, Andrew, for hosting this program. Absolutely happy to have you all on. And that's going to about do it for us for the show here today. I want to thank again everyone who did again participate in the show and tune in with us. We'll be back with you more here next week on the El Paso History Radio Show, airing here on News Radio 690 KTSM. I've been your host, Andrew J. Polk. Have a great weekend, y'all. We'll see y'all next week. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. 
That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, 